In this video, I'm going to go ahead and work through and find the exact value for the sine of 51 degrees, and I'm going to do so using the sum identity for sine, which can be expanded uh, using this formula. So we have the sine of two angles that are being added together, A and B, and so that can be expressed as the sine of A, the first angle, times cosine of B, the second angle, plus the sine of B times the cosine of A. Okay, so we need to come up with two angles, A and B, that add up to 51 degrees. And so we're going to go ahead and use the sine of 36 degrees and 15 degrees. So 36 plus 15 does indeed add up to 51 degrees. And we're going to also include these four values. So we have the sine of 15, 36, 54, and 75 degrees. Uh, all four of these values I uh, have found from scratch in other videos, so I'm not going to work this entire thing from scratch uh, for the sake of time and space, really, but I've already worked these four previously, and I have linked to these four videos down in the description for this video, so you can go ahead and see where all of these values came from, that I'm not just kind of making them up and throwing them into this formula, but it actually works out. So let's go ahead and see how this is going to expand, and then let's go ahead and find the exact value for the sine of 51 degrees. So it looks like it'll be the sine of 36 degrees times the cosine of 15 degrees plus the sine of 15 degrees times the cosine of 36 degrees. All right, so I'll just kind of move up a little bit to make space, but enough that we can still see what's going on up here. Okay. So here we go, the sine of 36 degrees. Well, we've written that one down right here. So we have the square root of 2 over 4 and then multiplied by this square root expression. And to that, we're going to multiply the cosine of 15 degrees. Well, you'll see in both the cosine of 15 and the cosine of 36 that sine and cosine have a nice relationship with one another that the cosine of one angle is going to be identical to the sine of the complement of that angle. So remember that complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So instead of using a cosine of 15 degrees, because I didn't make a video specifically for that, but I did make a video for the sine of 75 degrees, and of course 15 and 75 are complementary angles. So I see that the cosine of 15 degrees will be the same as the sine of 75 degrees. So I'll go ahead and put that value in right here. Okay, and to that we're going to add the sine of 15, which is going to be the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4, and then times the cosine of 36 degrees, which once again will use its sine counterpart. So the sine of 54 degrees will be this expression, the 1 fourth times this quantity, the square root of 5, plus 1. Okay, let's move up, make some space. So we have kind of this expression. It doesn't look very nice. I wonder uh, maybe how we can kind of fix it up a little bit. So it looks like here I have the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. If I factored out a square root of 2, it could multiply by this square root of 2, and I could have a real 2, which would then cancel with a 4 down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll factor this out, and we'll have 2 over, well, 4 times 4 is 16, so 2 over 16 is really just 1 eighth. So let me put a 1 eighth down there. And I'll go ahead and put the leftovers next, so the square root of 3 plus 1. And then I have this uh, radical expression right there. Okay, so that's kind of as nice as we can make this first bit. And to that, we're going to add. And uh, maybe let's do the same sort of thing. Let's factor out this square root of 2, and it'll go over 16 for those denominators being multiplied together. And then I'll multiply there by the leftovers, so the square root of 3 minus 1, and then the square root of 5 plus 1. Okay, so here we have the exact value for the sine of 51 degrees. And uh, I went ahead and did it this way because we have kind of some patterns going on. We have the square root of 3 plus 1 and the square root of 3 minus 1, and then some square root of 5 business here. And we have the nice coefficient uh, right there. So if you have seen any other values here, like the sine of 33 or some other things, you'll notice a lot of patterns that happen with the sine of any angle that is a multiple of three degrees. So let's go ahead actually and grab a calculator and just ensure that this value actually works. 
All right, so here's our calculator. And so the way we're going to do this, we're going to go ahead and do the inverse of sine and then plug in this entire expression and see if we get 51 degrees. So we'll start with our 1 eighth, and we're going to multiply that by the square root of 3 plus 1, and then we'll multiply that by this radical expression. And to that we'll add, and we have the square root of 2 divided by 16, and we'll multiply that by the square root of 3 minus 1, and that by the square root of 5 plus 1. Close off all those parentheses. Yeah, 51 degrees. So we see that that expression is going to be the exact value for the sine of 51 degrees. And again, notice there's no decimals, no rounding. This is the exact value. It's just the sum of a couple of irrational values. So we have the sum of two irrational numbers. And so here was our process, and here was our final value.